What a mess at London's Heathrow Airport today. It's in the news. We've all been watching it. And uh, I'm on a layover right now, and I've got a lot of requests to make a video about it. So let me talk about what happens when, number one, an airplane, airplane has to divert someplace. And number two, a major airport such as London Heathrow goes down. Now, the preliminary reports out of London Heathrow are that there was a fire at a power plant that was kind of adjacent uh, to the airport, which supplies apparently all the power and more importantly, the backup power for Heathrow. Um, sounds like an engineering problem there. Why did they have the backup and the primary power together? But that's a, another question for another day. Uh, and the entire uh, airport went out. Okay, so now if you got no communications, you got no electricity, you can't move airplanes on the ground, you can't land airplanes, you can't take off airplanes at that point. They have to send out the all call to everybody coming into Heathrow and everybody going out to Heathrow. Time out, everybody. You either got to go someplace else or, no pun intended, you got to cool your jets and just sit and wait until we get the power back up and we can get the system reignited because, my word, it takes a lot to get a big major airport like that going. So first on my list is this. What happens when a jumbo jet has to uh, divert someplace? I have reserve fuel that I uh, always plan before I take off. It's between me, the captain, and the dispatcher, how much reserve fuel. And there's a lot of different parameters that go into it. I'll try to make it as simple as possible. Generally speaking, I carry enough fuel to go from my takeoff airport to my destination airport to shoot an approach, to do a go around, to go to my alternate airport, and every time I go overseas, I have an alternate airport. Alternates for Heathrow would be like Birmingham or Manchester or maybe even Dublin. Dublin. I get all the way there, shoot another approach, and have about 10% of my total fuel load still remaining. That's a very general ballpark. I know a lot of you pilots are going to go, it's more complicated than that. It is, but it's always more fuel I carry, not necessarily less fuel. So I, one approach. Second approach, 10%. So let's say I have 150,000 pounds of gas uh, coming from the U.S. over to Heathrow. I'm typically going to land over there with about 32,000 pounds of gas in London, have plenty left over. If I had to do that approach, that go around, go to my alternate, shoot an approach, I would like to have at a minimum 15,000 pounds of fuel remaining. In fact, it's a requirement for me to have at least that much. So if I have to shoot another approach or I've got to go to another alternate, I've still got fuel to do that. So there's a backup to the backup to the backup in case something like this today goes wrong and a major airport just goes down. Uh, there's lots of other reasons that they could close an airport, but we know that they lost power at Heathrow today. What happens now at a major airport that goes down? Remember, Heathrow is one of the busiest airports in the world. And everybody's coming in and everybody's going out of Heathrow. It's a major disruption to world travel. So basically what's going to happen is this. They're going to send all the airplanes that are already airborne, right? They're going to say to them, they're going to send a message and say, Heathrow is down, indefinite amount of time, not sure it's going to be open by the time you get here. You should plan on going to your alternate. At that point, I get on the satellite communications with my dispatcher uh, back at, at home and I work out with the dispatcher, where would you like us to go? Now, he might already have an alternate on the flight plan, I'm not necessarily going to go there. That's just in an emergency or if I have to. He might say, look, there's so many airplanes diverting today. I don't want you at that airport. I want you at this airport. And so we'll negotiate that. It's got to be someplace that can handle my airplane. It's got to be someplace where we can do something with the passengers if we need to. It's very likely on a long flight like that that the flight crew, the cockpit crew, is going to time out. That means once they land, they're not going to have a lot of time to be able to say, you know, my crew day is going to continue here and uh, I can wait a couple of three hours, refuel, and hope that London reopens. They're probably going to be done for the day and have to go start their crew rest cycle. So that means everybody on that airplane is going to have to go to a hotel. There's a lot of logistics. Uh, I heard once that the if there's a cancellation or a divert like that, it costs the airline with a large airplane like mine somewhere around $300,000 for each one of those. Now, folks, that's a lot of money. Do I factor that in when I make the decision to divert? Not in the least. It's, it's the last thing on my mind, right? I'm thinking about number one, safety, number two, safety, and number three, 
you get it safety, mm -hmm. okay? And that's gonna be my primary concern. But all those people have to go someplace. So you negotiate that with your dispatcher. That's taking place on literally hundreds of flights that are on their way into Heathrow. Besides the snowball effect of all the airplanes that were supposed to depart Heathrow with all the people that are already there at the airport. So now you've got this log jam of people backing up and there's with something like a power outage, there's kind of a big question mark, right, as to how long it's going to take to get the airport back up and running. And then it's not like, no pun intended, flipping a switch. <laughs> do you see what I did there? Okay. Uh, at any rate, it's not like flipping a switch and everything goes back into motion again. You, you got to get clearances. You got to get fueling. You got to get people on those airplanes. You know, most of the people that were going to be on your airplane diverted someplace else. When are they coming in? It's a huge monkey wrench in the system when something like this happens. But every once in a while, you hear about a major airport like Atlanta or JFK, or in this case, London Heathrow uh, going down. And then there's uh, the inevitable after the fact, finger pointing and blame assessing that's gonna uh, come into play with, hey, how did a major airport like this go down? Because it costs a lot of money, not only to the airport, but to the airlines and honestly, folks, to the passengers, right? Now, hopefully the airlines will, will you know, help out with this, but let's say you were going and you were trying to catch a cruise and you missed your cruise. The cruise isn't going to wait for you. Uh, and there are things in life that we need to get to, right? And that's why we work really hard in the airline business to try to get you there, get you on time. But number one, my friends, is safety. And in the real world, things like this happen. And so London Heathrow went down today. What a mess. But now you know it goes into divert. I've got to have reserve fuel. I've got to work with my dispatcher to get an appropriate airport to get to. And then after I get there, I got to refuel and hopefully I've got enough time to get you back to London. If I don't, I got to go crew rest. We got to wait till tomorrow. There's a snowball effect. Oh my word. I am so glad I'm not working at Heathrow Logistics today. And by the way, so are you. Now you know, I'm Captain Steve. Fly safe.